Hey guys, it's Elisa. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I actually am going to be telling you guys a little bit about my first year of motherhood. Um, I have little Miss Alora here, so if you if you hear her messing around in the background, she's just hanging out. Um, but I have her over here. Um, I have my book over here of everything that I want to touch on. But yeah, I mean, let's just get into it. Okay, so one of the first things I have on my list to talk about is giving birth and kind of my experience with pregnancy so um honestly i feel like my whole experience was like kind of unique it wasn't super crazy or anything but a lot of you may know i did move from massachusetts to california i now am living back in massachusetts but um yeah it was an experience we moved across the country drove in my mini cooper with my back seat full my dog on my lap and i was about seven months pregnant so um that was fun but since i was moving across country i needed new doctors new insurance everything um and i had a really really difficult time with that um i wasn't able to get any of that in order yeah i never had a doctor from six months to when I actually gave birth so that was a little tricky that was a little iffy I mean I was fine I had perfectly fine pregnancy birth is ama was amazing um my child is great so not really that big of a deal and I'm sorry about the lighting changes I'm sitting in front of these three windows right now and it's getting kind of weird but I have like a little light thing going on behind so hopefully it's not too bad but yeah um so I did not have a doctor the whole last three months of my pregnancy. I don't know if that's the third trimester or whatever. Um, but I did not have a doctor. And when I did um, actually go into labor and everything, it sucked. Because for that reason, I had to wait about four to five hours before I could even get any pain med, any Tylenol, any fentanyl, anything. I had to wait and it's like, oh my God, Alora. What are you doing? But yeah, that was super fun. Um, basically, my whole labor and everything, the story behind that, I started feeling contractions around 1 a.m. on January 17th. Um, I didn't know it was fully contractions. I just knew I was super uncomfortable. I could not get comfortable in bed. Um, I was just tossing and turning, just trying to find a good way to position myself to feel like, okay, and be like, all right, okay, this is fine. Um, that did not happen. I ended up actually at one point getting up in the night and literally nearly falling down because I had gotten up to go to the bathroom and I got a contraction out of nowhere and I mean that's how it comes how that's how it goes it's terrible but I got a contraction out of nowhere and I literally almost just like fell to the ground um I had gone to the bathroom it felt like I had to take the biggest crap of my life but nothing comes out nothing happens and I wasn't trying to push too hard because I was not trying to have no baby in the toilet so um I let my child's father know like hey um, I'm probably gonna need to go to the hospital. I know you have work in the morning, but like if this doesn't stop by like 4 a.m. We're gonna have to go. I made it till about 2 3 a.m. And I was like, okay, yeah, we gotta go So we were driving to the hospital and it was hell every bump was awful I remember breaking my ankle and the pain I felt every time my mom was driving over a bump to bring me to the hospital and Yeah, it was basically that all over again um, We arrived at the hospital around like 4 4 10 probably um i was i think four and a half centimeters dilated at that point so it was moving along pretty quickly um i went and i basically just waited it was all just waiting contractions suck so bad but all i could do was just wait honestly um Nurses came in, they were helping me. I think I actually am lying. I was able to get like extra strength Tylenol probably around like six o'clock, but I couldn't get any real meds until eight o'clock. And then I ended up getting my epidural because I'm a big sissy. I ended up getting my epidural at nine o'clock, 9.30 ish. We started pushing like minutes after that. Okay, we had a screamer, so she's in here now. But it took me about 12 pushes. It was probably about 20 to 30 minutes long. Um, and pro tip, when you're giving birth, don't push from your stomach. You want to push like you're taking a crap. Hey, 
<laughs> you want to push like you're taking a crap. You don't. You will be there forever with no type of improvement. Everyone's like, no, push like this. And I'm like, okay, first of all, this is my first time. I've never done this. Like, let's relax, okay? So once I figured it out, I got it down. It took me about two to three pushes and she was out. Uh, she was born at 1017 on 117. And if we were going on like... What um, East Coast time? It would have been 117 at 117. So that's really cute. That's my little baby girl. She's such a sweetie. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. The contractions, yeah, they suck. You really just have to focus. You know? It's really mind over matter, and you just have to zone out. I fell asleep a few times, so that was really great for me. But it was still like crappy. Okay, Laura was being too crazy. She had to go. But um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was actually breastfeeding so a lot of people ask me about this and ask me how long i intend to do it ask me how i'm still doing it how does her teeth affect um just ask me why i'm still doing it um she just turned one i don't feel like i'm even doing it for that long just yet i mean i'm gonna do it for however long she wants to um I feel like it really goes from situation to situation. Mothers who bottle feed, mothers who breastfeed, mothers who use formula, no matter what, it doesn't matter. I feel like whatever works for you in your situation, that's it. If you want to do it till your kid's five, I mean, that's a little, but who, the, who am I? Who is anybody to judge? You are building that bond with your child. That is the way that you want to do things. And that's really all that matters. But my personal experience, I love it so much. I I wouldn't want to have to do anything else. Um, it was definitely tough in the beginning. I do have kind of flat nipples, so it was hard getting her to latch. It was hard. like we were both super new at it, obviously. Um, we've both never done it before, but learning that and creating that bond with your child and just having like such beautiful moments where you're just looking down and knowing your child is getting everything they need from you and just thriving off of the nutrients and everything that you're giving them and you're able to provide for them just by have, keeping your diet healthy, just living. Honestly, you could eat like shit and you could still do it. Uh, I probably shouldn't do that, but I mean, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think, I'm go like I said, I'm going to breastfeed until she no longer wants to. I love it. The bond that we have from it, the love that I have for her and just the connection the source of comfort just everything it's at a point it does become um, less nutritional you, you obviously have to start feeding them regular meals so she eats still she already eats about three meals a day anyway um, but it's really just becomes a source of comfort at a point and I'm totally fine with that I love it I love her and I'll stop when she's ready to stop, but even then I feel like I'm going to be pretty sad about it. And I definitely plan on breastfeeding all of my children, even if my boobs are sagging to my knees, honestly. So my next bullet on here is making the decision to go back to working um, and not being a stay-at-home mom. Okay, so my next bullet on here is the transition from stay-at-home mom to working mom and also single mom. Um... I feel like for me, this really wasn't a tough um, decision to make. I was working all throughout my pregnancy. I probably worked up until about two weeks before I had her. So it wasn't really anything super crazy. Um, I really just hated sitting at home, doing nothing, relying on somebody else, whether it was my mother my father her father like it doesn't matter it's just not something that i like to do if i can work and i am well and able that i'm going to because it's boring like why do you just want to sit at home all day it just it just uh was a really shitty situation for me especially because as i've already mentioned several times i was in a new state i was across the country i had no friends i had her father's family but they were all spanish speaking so it wasn't really super easy for me to um conversate and build bonds that i would if i had people of my age like-minded and just people that like had the same interests as me i had two friends in california that i really loved um and they were great, but 
it just wasn't enough. I was missing my family. I was missing the friends that I had. I was missing my daily routine. It, I just felt so out of place there. And I think that also contributed a lot to wanting to work and wanting to have something to do, wanting to be able to be out and about and just doing something, not sitting in the house all day and just like being miserable even as a new mom you're learning so much and you have so much going on with maintaining your home taking care of your child taking care of yourself at the point i had a dog and it was just a lot but at the same time it wasn't enough to fulfill me and i really needed some outdoor interaction i needed some source of outdoor something you know um so going back to work was literally the first like the first thing I thought of like it wasn't even like an argument it wasn't any type of thing I loved it and it was all I wanted to do so even um coming back to uh, Massachusetts and being a single mother um I have to really thank my family a lot because without them being able to work and provide for my child and provide like any sense of stability and financial stability um would have been virtually impossible to this day Alora still isn't in daycare um i am working on it but it's really not as easy as a lot of people like to make it seem or like to think that it is um but without my mom literally she basically watches Alora every single time that i am at work so i mean i have to really thank her my brother and my sister um they all are such huge helps and like I said, I would not be able to do everything that I have to do without them. Daycare is so expensive. Being on a list waiting for financial help with it takes forever. It's just really a hassle, honestly. And once you even get the help, it's like... It's it's just a lot to deal with. But um, I do have to really thank my family because without them, I would really freaking be in some trouble and that's like a thing where it gets into like the struggles of being a single parent i love raising my child by myself um her father is a great man he's a great dad but when he's around um i'm like kind of jealous i don't know like i just want her all to myself honestly so uh, that's probably really toxic and i shouldn't have that mindset but so my next bullet is how I feel a year in. Uh, honestly, it's been amazing. Um, I feel like I really haven't had a moment where I was like regretful or anything like that. I know in the beginning months of my pregnancy and basically kind of throughout my whole pregnancy, I was really doubtful. I didn't know if it was what I wanted. I was literally in Boston one day, literally drove all the way there about to get an abortion and it was still super early on in my pregnancy about to get into portion and the next day i was actually having my first ultrasound and i was already feeling like i just didn't know i didn't know how to feel i didn't know what to do honestly i really it was a really difficult point and i had just have i'll probably get into it one day later on but it was just a lot of different mixed emotions for me. Um, but I had spoken to the woman that worked in the clinic. I had spoken to the woman that worked in the hospital. And she just reassured me, like, you have plenty of time. If this is a decision you want to make, you have plenty of time. Um, if you decide this, you come right back. But once you make this decision, it's final. So... Perhaps I had to let her know, like, I did have the doctor's appointment um, the next day. So she said, perhaps just go, see what's going on, just see how you feel. And I took her advice. Um, I went, and as soon as I heard my baby's heartbeat, uh, that was my baby. Like, I, nothing else mattered. I told myself a lot when I first got pregnant, like, hey, you can be a mom at any time, but you can only be so young for so long that's very true for anybody in any situation but for right now i am so glad that i did what i did i am so glad that i have my beautiful daughter i i wouldn't want it any other way it, um, it has caused a lot of really emotional things in my life um but we're getting through it i just like kind of take everything day by day and i'm just like it's God's plan, really. Like, but I am so in love with my child. I am so in love with being a mother. And I'm just very happy. And 
I really couldn't ask for anything more, honestly. And okay, guys, that is it for this video. Um, I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for watching. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!